Hey everybody, we are joined by Super Scout Sam Seal, entering his 28th season with the Green Bay Packers. And Sam, how did it all begin? Well, how did it all begin, Larry? It all began with Ron Wolf. You know, this, this is what I told those young guys the other day. Without Ron Wolf, I don't think any of this be here. The new building, anything, because he started it all. As you know, being an ex-player, I remember playing for the Raiders, and we did something wrong, or they got mad at us. The first thing they say, they send us to Green Bay. <laughs> you know, and as a player, we didn't want that. You know, but as a scout, and after I got out of football looking for a job, I wanted, at first I wanted to be a coach. But everyone kept on telling me I need to go to high school and work my way up to be a coach. And I called Ron Wolf, well, Terry Rabisky, who was also a coach at the Raiders when I first started. He called Ron Wolf and told Ron Wolf to bring me in. And Ron bought me in. And I was like, Ron, I don't know anything about scouting. And he looked at me, he said, did you play uh, Pop Warner football? I said, yeah, two years, high school four. He said, were you red-shirted? I said, no. So he said, four years of college, that's 10. And he said, how many years you played in the NFL? I said, nine, 10. He said, that's 20. You know enough. He just told me, hey, go out on the road and start scouting. And the one thing he told me was like, just don't embarrass the team. Just do your, just do your work and you'll be fine. And when I first started, I was like, man, I do this for two or three years. Then I find something else. I go be a teacher. But I didn't want to do that. And 28 years later, I'm still saying I'm going to be a teacher, but I can't leave, you know. So it, it's been great, you know. Um, again, without Ron, you know, but and, I, and this this going to something else. But we'll see this year because since I've been here, we had two quarterbacks, two great quarterbacks. So I'm hoping we can make it three straight great quarterbacks, you know. So we'll get see. You mentioned your time, you were a player, Ron was working for the Raiders. Do you guys, I always wondered this, do you guys care to that Raider bad boy stuff with you? Is that, is that in, <laughs> indelible? Yes, you know what, Larry? Um, the Raider bad boy image was something, when I was a rookie and I came in, this is what uh, Al Davis told me. He told me he don't care what we did during the week. But on Sundays, be a Raider. And being a Raider means whipping butt. All right? Take names. And, and, and what, what used to really make me laugh was I remember one year we went to New England. And as we pull in, we, you know, we had some pap newspapers. And it was like, hide your, your, your wives and your daughters. The Raiders are in town. I thought that was funny, you know, because if anybody know anything about football, you know, when you, when you go away, well, we were different because if we had an a, a East Coast game, we used to leave. We didn't leave Saturday. We used to leave Friday. And I think one day year we, leave, we left on a Thursday. So we had time. But when it was time to play football, you know, it, especially Saturday nights, I didn't hear about too many people getting in trouble, you know. So it was, it was guess, a, the image, and, and, and I guess we played into it. But then after a while, you know, people start talking about forget the ratings. We, they started smacking us in the mouth, you know, so, yeah. You were the Packers West Regional Scout. Now you are the National Scout. What changes for Sam Seal? Nothing. Ted Thompson used to always say he was a scout, and I'm a scout. I don't know if Ted was ever a scout. I, I doubt if. Ted, even though he wasn't married, stayed away from home for two or three weeks, had to drive. Because when I, when, when I first started, we used to drive. And if anybody drive, you figure I, I get up at like 4 o'clock in the morning and drive from San Diego to Salt Lake City, Utah. Now, that's a drive. Or from um, Eugene, Oregon to Nevada, Reno. Those are drives. Now I fly a little bit more. And like I tell people, some days I'd rather drive because you get to the airport, it's delays and, you know, it's, 
where when I'm driving, I just get in the car and start to drive and, and get to where I want to go. So, you know, it's no big difference. I'm, I'm still a West Coast cow. And, and Larry, I, I tell this to anybody, titles don't mean anything to me. You know, just pay me what you think I deserve and let me go about my business. And to me, this is all about finding players. You know, a lot of people got titles, but they don't, they don't know how to find a player. You know, and, and, and this is one thing I tell people. You put me in a room with, with your so-called best scouts, with all the titles in the world, and tell us watch players and see who comes out with the most players. And I'm talking about players that could play. I'm not talking about just named guys like, because anybody can find a first round draft choice. To me, the object of this game is to find a, a four, fifth, six rounder who comes in and help your, your ball club. And that's what I look for, you know? I mean, it's easy to find a Howie Long and a Marcus Allen. You need to find the real guy, like the Donald Drivers. You know, when we had Alonzo Highsmith here, go find me a Donald Driver. Then you could come talk to me about being a good scout. You know, but when, when, you, when you look at your resume and you're always talking about, oh, I got this guy, but he was a first rounder, Tell me some of the six and the seven rounders you made. You know, that, that's what I look for, you know. So, I mean, that's what I am. I, I, I'm just a scout. You know, like I tell people, I'm at the stage of my, of my career now where, and I keep on telling these guys, and they keep on telling me, no, you can't leave. And I'm not planning to leave today or tomorrow, but I'm at the stage now where I'm like, hey, <laughs> time for me to move on you know so hopefully hopefully these young guys that come in now I help them and, and and you know and they and they they can learn something from me if not hey so be it Brandon Ross we talked to him earlier he called you the godfather oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Larry, that, that comes from uh, a guy that played here Reggie Cobb God rest his soul. Um, out, in, out on the West Coast, they call me the Godfather. I don't know why, but it seems like Reggie Co Cobb used to get mad at me because we'd be sitting in a room and I want some water or something. And I just turn and say, hey, man, go get me a water. And no matter who it is, they'll get up and go get the water. And as they start to walk, and they be like, I, I don't believe you just asked me to go get a water and I get up and go get you a water. So he started calling me the godfather. But I'm, you know, like I said, I just try to help these young guys, you know, because like Brandon Ross, Mike Owen, all the young guys we have up here. Because even though, like I told you before, it was as a player that sent me to Green Bay, a lot of people don't know Green Bay is a hidden gem, you know, and the way the Green Bay organization treat the players and the scouting staff is unbelievable. Now, I've never been anywhere else, so I can't say that, that this is the best. But to me, being here, this is one of the best organizations where it takes care of people and people actually matter. You know, where, where, where some places it's just like, hey, you're a scout, go do this. Here, it actually matters. Sam, You've mentioned a number of times already working with the young guys, the young guys in your business. What's the most important nugget that you can give them? The most important thing I could, I, I could give these guys is to do their work and do it well and, and be passionate about what you do. Just like when you were a player, when I was a player, if you're not passionate about what you're doing, it's not going to help you. You know, you, you got to want to do this because a lot of people don't know this. Being a scout, they probably think we live a glamorous life. But being away from your wife and kids for a while, it gets kind of hard. You know, and I remember when I first came in this business, Ron Wolf told me, don't ever let this, this job come between you and your wife. Now, I've been married now for 32 years. And it's kind of because when I first got here, and I'm not going to mention names, but a lot of guys were divorced when they got in this business, you know, they got divorced. So that, that's one thing I, I tell guys, make sure family comes first, 
but get your job done. If you get your job done, everything will t take care of itself. Finding those players you were talking about a moment ago, how does one do that? I mean, is it more art or more science? You know what, well, Larry, that's what I tell people. You can never, you can never judge a man's heart, you know, because you can see the greatest player on film, but when he doesn't have the heart and the love to play football, it doesn't matter how great you are. I want to know what kind of heart you have. You know, like, like if I'm watching a, a, a free safety, best going to school, he's the best free safety in the whole college. But every time I put on the film and a, and a running back come through the middle of the field, he's ducking his head and missing. I don't care how great you are. You can't play for me because you have no heart. You know, and, and I'm sure as, as much as you've been around football, you, you've seen guys that's supposed to be the greatest players in the world, but then it comes down to fourth and one, and a running back coming through the hole, and he, and he turns it down. I, I don't want that on my team. You know, analytics can't judge that. You know, F is four for one for the Green Bay Packers, and we're playing the, the Philadelphia Eagles, and you know that quarterback likes to run. Four for one on the goal line to go to the Super Bowl. I want somebody that, that's going to come up and put his face right, right in his chest and drive him back. I don't want somebody that's coming up and ducking his head and stepping into the end. Analytics can't read that. But I'm sure it's fine for people. But for me, I just go from what my eyes tell me. If you could play, you could play. If you can't, analytics can't do nothing for me. Sam, when you look at a kid, first time, first time you've been exposed to him, is there something that you're looking for first? What catches your eye? How his teammates react to him. All right? Like, say, if I go in and see a quarterback, I want to see on the field, if somebody hits this quarterback, is his teammates going to run to, to protect him? Or are they going to walk away like, man, we don't give a hell about him. Whip his behind. You know, I want to see, I want to see if I go to a game, say I go to a college game and the score is 40 to nothing and Michigan is playing Weber State. I want to see the guy that on Weber State that's not giving up, that's playing like, I don't care if you're in Michigan, I'm playing. That's the type of guy I want on my football team, a guy that's not going to give up. And if we're losing 42 to nothing, a guy that wants to fight with me. I I'm looking at the, at the Michigan sideline. I I I'm looking at, oh, you up 42 nothing, and you over here like, uh, you know, that's what I look for. I, I look for people that that's engaging the game. Like, say, Michigan Weber State, you pull the whole starters out. I'm looking to see if the starters is, is – talking to their backup, like, hey, man, boo, or, or they just sitting over there drinking water with their legs crossed. That's what I'm looking for. I, I want people that's engaged for the whole football game, you know, guess not when they're playing. I, I, I need to see you help. You know, Larry, like I started in this league for four or five years, but I was a backup for the Raiders for a long time. And I remember when, when, when Mike Haynes and Lester was on the field, I always watched to see what they were doing. And that, that's what I watch. I'm watching to see if a backup, because two or three years down the line, I'm going to be scouting this guy. I want to see if he's watching to learn from a Charles Woodson. It's more than just playing the game. It's, it's how you interact with your teammates. It's, it's how, how, how you treat people. Like, like, when I go to school and I go in, say I, I come to, to scout you, I go to the training room, and how does he interact with your, with your staff? I want to finish up, Sam, with a quote of yours. I condensed it a little bit, but the words are exactly your words. Titles are for people that have great egos and want to say, I'm this and I'm that. I don't need that. If a promotion happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. I know what I mean to this team, and that's all that matters to me. Yes. And again, think about it, Larry. People that, 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 that goes out, and don't get me wrong, and, and, and I guess with, with titles, you get more money, all right? But this is what I tell people. I was born on a tiny island 
Barbados. I came to Orange, New Jersey at nine years old. Picked up football at 10 years old. I never had anything, but I never knew I was poor. I never knew that because everybody around me was in the same situation. You know, came from a single mom, never got in trouble. Seen her work every day of her life till cancer got her. And to me, a title, or oh, I'm a director, I'm, so what? What do you know as a director? To me, a lot of people with titles, all they could do is do a spreadsheet. I can't do a, a spreadsheet. Now come and ask me about a player, and I'll tell you what you need to know. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, man. You're the best. Super Scout, Sam Seal, everybody.